Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Visio. In this module, I want to go through how you can format basic shapes. So first of all, I've got a stencil with the basic shapes showing and a blank canvas. So when you bring a shape on, so there's a rectangle shape and a square shape and a circle. So a rectangle is what it says on the tin. When you resize it, it's always going to be a rectangle. So if you wanted that to be a square, you should use this shape because this will always be a square when you resize that one. So you can see when you adjust it, it's going both ways, even though I'm pulling the side. And you can see these little arrows giving you some idea that that there now is exactly the same width as the shape above. Now, if I go a bit wider, it doesn't do that. And if I take that one, pull that a bit wider, you get the lines coming up to tell you it's the same width. And circle, if I make that bigger. So now that's telling you it's lined up with the two other shapes. Now, every shape has its own formatting options. So just move these out of the way a little bit and just focus on this rectangle shape what you've got when you click on a shape is the option to format that shape so shape styles is basically what you see in this little window if i drop that down you can see there's different color options so i'll change that and the text when you type it should be white now you notice that when i type that it zooms in to show you what you're doing but as soon as you click away that goes back down to the original size now in terms of text you can have this to the top to the left or the other way around wherever you want to using these tools here you can even use bullets and I double click back into there you can create like a little bullet list on it now in older versions of Visio, that's a bit more involved. You have to play around a bit to get that same sort of feature, but it's there. So these are all paragraph tools. Down the bottom there, you've got a little arrow, which takes you into a few more features. So you've got the font style and size, which you've also got on the ribbon, so there's no need to come in here for that. Case, position. So this is a bit like Word, where you can change the actual position make it superscript you can underline it straight through and you can make it transparent like so and then you can see i've now made that fade a little bit now each of these you can access the same place so i clicked on the font one before i clicked on the paragraph down arrow and it give you this dialog box so it's the same way of getting into it so character spacings you can Expand them. Let's do that. Okay. So that's just widened. If I make this bigger, it's just widened the gap between the letters. Go back into that and back onto the font tab. So if I just put that back to normal so you can see that spacing a bit better. Come back into this, see what else we've got in there. So that was um, the character option. You've also got a scale option there. So if I make that 200%, let's have a look at that. Now it's starting to lose, it's starting to look a, bit, a bit grim. I am messing it up on purpose. And in there, we've also got the text block, which is um, where it is at the moment. If I put that into the middle, You've got the option of changing the margins click ok to that it's just the same as moving this around except with visio you have the ability to actually physically move the text block which is sitting on that shape out of the shape so if i click on this tool and then just hover over that i can pick this up and i'm going to lose the font because the font is is white so I'll just make it black so you can move that out like so and then you must take this off and put that back to the pointer tool otherwise you'll be doing text blocks 
if I move this shape, that block is still attached to this shape. So you're moving them still together, as the same way as this one is moving together. You've just offset the actual text block so people can see it. So the reason for doing that, you might want another shape sitting on top of that. It's going to sit on top of, you know, on top of that shape so you can't see the text. So you might just want to offset the text. It's text. It's totally up to you why you do that. Now, these tools in the middle, you've got a text tool, which just allows you to draw a text box on its own in its own space. And then again, you take the text tool off, put the pointer tool back on. You don't need to do this in Visio because I've already said every shape that you bring from this stencil, I'm just going to delete this one off now. Every shape that you bring from this stencil has, has a text box on it already. So if you're bringing these on and then sitting these on top of another shape, you're basically duplicating the, the text on that shape. So now there's two text boxes on this shape, one that's glued at the minute and one that's loose. Um, so it's not good practice, but a lot of people do do it. Now I can actually format this text box to have a line on it. So at the moment, let's put a dotted line around it and let's make it a bit fatter than that. So you've got weight options so you can see it. And you've also got color options. So I'll make it red so it stands out. And if I make it a little bit bigger, like so, you've also got fill options and you can drop that down and go into fill options if you want to. And then you get this box coming up format shape which gives you the options of doing gradients like you can in other Microsoft packages. So I'll just do that to show you. Pick a terrible color scheme so it looks really bad. Like that. That's pretty cool. Not. You can also use the transparency as well to fade that a little bit. You can change the direction. You can change the... Um, Let's put it to radio type. So you can you can really format these text box any way you like. And same same principle applies to this. So if I go to gradient fill, it's just picking the same gradient that I, I've already chosen up there. So I'll get rid of shape data for a second and I'll get rid of this. Now you can also, if you want to, let's let's get rid of this text box. You can also group shapes together. So if I want to sit this circle on there like so, hold my shift key down. So they're selected together, but I want to group them. So I'll group them, group. So they become one shape and then you can move them or spin them as a pair. Like so. And then if you go for the fill options, you want the same fill, like so you can do that. Let's get rid of that. Now, there is a tool that you can use to um, ungroup these. It's just the first option, like so. You just ungroup them and you can pull them apart. And you've also got the option to change a shape from this ribbon at the top there. The effect option gives you loads of options here like for shadows. So let's go for this bottom one. So it's got a shadow coming off there and once you've done that, go into shadow, you can go into shadow options and then you can play around with the shadows. You can change the color of the shadow. Let's go for red and you've got the blur on it and you can really make these diagrams look quite cool. Obviously it's got to be relevant. Reflection, it's, these are the presets. So you've got the reflection and the shadow on there. So you've got to be careful you don't go over the top. 3D, let's come down. Let's pick one of these. That doesn't look too cool, but all of these options are all formatting options that you can do on your shapes. 
and then when you've totally messed it up you can reset the thing so let's get rid of that so get so get ourselves away from all of this so with this rectangle i'll just bring another one on and have a quick look at how you do the connectors so amongst the tools you've got this connector tool when i click on that if i hover over any shape you get these little connecting connection points see them there this one in the center but you also if i don't hover over a connection point you actually get the whole shape changing color so the whole shape's gone green because it's like a green line around it and but it's not like a little green box there so there's two types of connectors you need to be aware of point to point where you've got one point going to another point um i'll go to that point and you've got a connector where let's just do another point to point there where you can go shape to shape so shape to shape would be that to that now i'm not going to do that one let's take this off let's just have a look at these point to points if i move this they should stay at those two points that i've, that I've just used to connect up and they are staying at the same two points all the time so if i just delete one of these i think i had two connectors on there so i'll just use this one to demonstrate demonstrate that again so it should stay on that point no matter where i move that shape to that is a point to point connector now if i delete that one off and do a shape to shape one connector still connector the whole thing goes green the whole thing goes green there's no point actually highlighted it's the whole green box and it said they're glued to shape so what should happen now is that that should always snap to the shortest distance between the two shapes like so so it's not staying on the same connection point so that's that one i'll just do the other one so you can see the difference again so i'll use two squares two squares on so point to point this one is point to point across one point to another so that should always stay on that point so it's gone round like that if i do the same thing on this one it changes direction so those are the two types of connections you can do point to point and shape to shape if you wanted to add an extra connection point, so I'll click on this one and do the connection. You can see there's a connection point there, there, and the sides, but not on the corners. If you wanted to do an extra connection point, you can use this tool, connection point. You just need to sit where you want it to go, hold your control key down, you get a little plus, and then click your mouse button. Now that should have put a connector point there that I can now connect to. You can see the little green square coming up there. So I can go from there, say to the bottom one. And then if I move that one around, it stays on that, it stays on that. Let's just get rid of this line just to not confuse things. So it should stay there and it does. So that's you creating your own little connection points if you haven't got or you've got multiple lines coming off this one say and if i just delete that off let's say you wanted a more than one line coming across so you could come across from that one now you haven't got one on this shape so it's only going to go to the default places but you've got one there so you can take that across to the same place and you've got one um, you haven't got one on the corner so i'd have to do another one so you've got shape to shape and point to point point to point connectors So that's all I want to talk about in this session. Hopefully you found that useful and I'll see you in the next one.